guys. I'm Bob. I'm Barb. Together we make up Hedis World. Where are we at today, Bob? We are at Pine Country RV Park in Belvedere, Illinois. It's Belvedere, dear. Belvedere. So stay tuned. We're going to give you a tour of this park. We're Bob and Barb. We've lived by the rules all of our lives. But in 2020, we threw that rule book out the window. We sold our home and moved full time into an RV with our cat, Amelia. And from now on, we will be living life our way. Don't you want to come travel in our world? Okay, so you're going to see a little bit of us on camera as we discuss this park today. Yep. My DJI Rocksteady, for some reason, was not on and it gives you that real dizzy kind of feeling when you're watching. It was rocking. not Rocksteady. <laughs> Rocksteady. It was rock and roll. <laughs> It was rocking and rolling, that is for sure. So you're gonna see the park, but we're also gonna talk about it. So we're gonna kind of flip back and forth because we wanna make sure you get yeah. a really good understanding of this park. It's a good, decent Thousand Trails Park. Thousand Trails are hit or miss. And the word resort sometimes is loosely put out there. Yeah. Um, we've seen <laughs> resorts that didn't have hardly anything, but this was actually a decent park. I really enjoyed this park. And we had some really great company at this park. We were there eight days. We stayed in the designated Thousand Trails section, which is a newer section up front to the right. An awesome spot to get into. There are some other spots where Thousand Trails people were situated throughout the park. The park is mostly sold and also the area we were in was up for sale as well. Yep. So what we share with you in the video today may not be true in the future as right. far as open Thousand Trails spots. Yeah, we found that Thousand Trails that every spot is for sale. Yeah. So every spot. Some parks is a lot worse than others. A lot of your bigger parks, they'll sell every spot if they can sell it. And I'm not sure what the relationship between Thousand Trails and the owners of these parks, but they're all for sale. The campground that you see here on the right is actually where we were staying. But when we get to the end of the video, we're going to go through it. Now let's take you through the rest of the park. So welcome to Thousand Trails Pine Country. They call it the family campground. Today we're doing a walking tour. Most of this park is 50 amp. There are some 30s, and when we got there, they give us our site assignment because you know Thousand Trails, they don't give you an assignment. Yeah. Even though we do call ahead and we find out where we're going to be, uh, sometimes they're on the ball and sometimes they're not. But this site they tried to give us was back in the annual section, which is fine, but the site was 30 amp and it was small. And we're big. We wouldn't have fit comfortably in there. Yeah, this park has some construction going on. The check-in process is a little bit different when you first come into the road. There's a little building right there it's also a little tiny store you go in and you check in and they uh, give you your information and you get signed in and they go ahead and set up this gate right here you'll see the exit gate is evil barb hates that gate we were riding our bicycles and that gate did knock her off her bicycle that gate get a good look at the evil gate here we came up here and we were going to ride our bicycles out and then back around the gate went up i was going through and it hit me in the head hit me here and knocked me right off my bike to you bad gate i will give thousand trails a thumbs up on a lot of these parks are seeing some money being spent in some of these whether it's yeah. just to upgrade from 30 to 50s but you're seeing some of these spots where they're actually starting to put a little gravel in them and actually maintain the roads a little better and this one actually had pretty good roads yep the roads were blacktop until you got to like a little bridge yep. and then after that it was all gravel but there was no potholes or anything it was very dusty because we didn't have a lot of rain in that period so it was really dusty back there if your camper was back there it was full of dust front section we were at there wasn't a lot of traffic even though it was dusty there wasn't a lot of traffic flying by us they talk about mosquitoes are bad at this park we didn't see any mosquitoes at all and we were here in august of 2021 but we did believe that we were in um, a poltergeist area because yeah. of all the flies oh it was <laughs> it was the worst fly place i've yeah. ever seen yeah. you'll on occasion just like a house you'll get a fly in the house and you'll build a hunting down and get rid of him but no. these flies here they were crazy i mean you open the door you just leap out of the camper straight to the ground and slam the door because there were so many flies there was like a they called it a pond in this section that looked like a moat it was real dried up and i guess that was attracting the flies like barb said the mosquitoes weren't so bad but these flies were crazy this one has 12 unsold sites yeah because they counted them the thousand trails can be in and since we're doing a walking tour because the park is small we're just going to kind of show you the areas and we'll show you our area last this spot over here is pretty much just a loop going in and going out yep just a circle there is a lake on the map that they give you but we could never find it this is a very well maintained 
camp yes. around. They mow the grass. They even weed eat around your site. And they're very careful around your sewer and electrical grass. It's been mowed twice since we've been here. So. Yeah, we've been here eight days. And there's a little <laughs> creek that runs through the, the campground. This is the propane tank area here. It's a cleanup area, yeah. Yep, sewer dump area. So basically, if you go down this road and go back, it'll take you to the back of the park. And you go all the way around and you come out this bird over here. Yeah, back that road there too, there's a loop for tent camping. So there's a oh, loop yeah. that's it's... designated just for tent camping. So we are going to take you back by their activity center, which is in the middle of being renovated. So you cannot go inside. Two nights ago, they had a s'mores for everybody to come over and enjoy s'mores. I'm going to insert an important picture right here of me, who's always trying to do keto, getting to eat a s'mores. So this park sometimes is known for some of the perms having lots of people come in and it gets a little rowdy. So the police are here every Friday and Saturday. They've got the old fashioned park lights. So this is the bathhouse, which is open. The only way to get into the pool is through the bathhouse. So I'm going to take you through there. Okay. The bathhouse is pretty clean. It smells really fresh, kind of orangey. And then, oh my God, I can't get out. They must unlock it at a certain time their sand volleyball. Oh, it's deflated way over there. They've got a jumpy thing, which I'm going to insert some more important footage here of seeing how much fun that is. This is a pretty nice pool. It's got nice area. It's got umbrellas, which is very important because it's hot here. And then they've got this pool, which is a little crisp. They say it's heated, but it's been so hot here. It felt good. And humid. It felt good. A lot of permanents here. The back section of the park is a large loop and then it's wadded off with side roads, just like most parks you go into. In the back section, where it's mostly 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 permanent it's 50 and 30 yeah. there are just a couple of spots they have back there for thousand trails people as well thousand trails sometimes will kind of keep everybody in the same spot so when you get there the, the ones that are on the ball will actually have a layout of their property and they'll have circles on ones they where they want you to go sometimes we will get the bike out and go around and find our own spot because yeah. It's first come, first serve. We've been dinged before because there was so-called Thousand Trails dignitaries coming in. So they took the yeah. spot. So, oh, we got people from Thousand Trails. I don't care who you got coming in. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a paying customer. First come, first serve. The worst is when they go, a salesman's coming in. So yeah. he needs to have that spot. Sorry. But he's not here. And a lot of times they're like, well, we don't even know if he's really going to show. Yeah, we've watched the spot be unattended for two weeks while we're there because yeah. they were waiting for someone to show up. had to be in some crappy spot because no. of it. No, I'm taking the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> if he shows up, he can take a spot like any other customer. Maybe if a Thousand Trail salesperson had to take a crappy spot, then they would realize maybe this maybe, park needs some money. Maybe they would spend some money on maybe gravel. Like I'll go over a couple of the amenities. Um, first, I just want to say it's got 236 sites. Some of the amenities listed are the clubhouse, the shuffleboard, fishing we don't know where shuffleboard or fishing is yeah you can't get to the lake uh, they do have wi-fi java communications which we didn't use because our horizon worked very well here yep we were able to stream i did four uploads of videos here which i love i can use my own internet they do have rv storage here it is a pet friendly site but you do have to keep your animals on a leash at all times oh side note if you got a pet and you're walking them and up front where we are you'll see it's like a desert some people have little plants they put outside don't let your pet pee on the plant. Shame on you. Yeah, on, on the plants or people's <laughs> electrical pedestals. Yeah, shame on you. Puppy to a grassy area and let them do their yeah. business. You just have to go a little bit farther to get to the grass or a neighbor's plant. Nature hiking trails, there are some of those. Coming up here on the right, they do have uh, restrooms and shower facilities and they seem to be very clean. They do have cottage rentals here. They did some renovations in 2019. That's when they built the area up front. And then the renovations to the activity center now, which I don't know what that involves. This section right over here is actually where we'll, we're staying. We'll take you through that section and let you know how many that are open for Thousand Trails. What, a couple years old? Three, like yeah, three years old. Good. And if they try to tell you 30 amp in the back and this has got openings, say no. I yeah. want to be in 50 amp full hookups out front. So this is the creek, I guess they call it, that runs from the bridge. And then here's the only lake uh, we can find. The trail that goes back here, but it just dead <laughs> in. Yeah, that's the trail, it doesn't go anywhere. So this is the first park where we have made like three friends right off the bat. The first one is right here. This is Mike and Lucy's camper right here. So Mike and Lucy are here. He is an amazing chef. 
So Mike and Lucy were probably one of the most interesting couples we have ever met in a park so far. Lucy is just a beautiful, full of life living woman. You know, just how it is straight out. And I love that about her. I felt an immediate comfort being with her and, and having her be one of my friends on the road, a permanent real friend on the road. As soon as we pulled into our spot here, we passed their camper, which they were on our left. They had paid for an annual spot there. And they were trying to get an annual spot in the back where it was more wooded. Like this, this front section was pretty much you're okay. out in the sun. Yeah. As soon as I pulled in, Mike watched us as we went by, you know, the big rig pulling in and he come over and just started talking to me like we were best friends. He's just a great guy. Which was super cool. And then he invited us over to have a drink or two. And then we, when we got over there, we started talking about food and Texas food. Our favorite things. Yep. And <laughs> so he cooked for us. Started up his grill. He threw some corn on and yep. cooked some amazing food for us. Yep which was incredible and he wanted to share that with us. And it was so interesting spending time with them and getting to know them. It's a couple that we hope to run into again sometime yep. down the road. I know they're permanents in Illinois right now, but when we come back through, we would actually stay at this park again, just so we could spend a few more days with them. This is the Riverstone that is next to us. This is Gary and Carol, yep. and they are super nice. They're getting ready to go to the Frog Rally Yep. next week. So now let's talk a little bit about Gary and Carol. Gary and Carol were a super fun couple. One, they're river stoners. You That's know. right. We had something in common with them right away, which river stoners or river stone owners, we call them river stoners, but they, they're far and few, few between because you don't see find. as many. Yeah. I mean, and we've been in some parks where we found, like in uh, Florida, where we found bunches of them, but in most parks, you're lucky if you find another well, stone. you might find it, but then there might, they're usually not there. It's like you go and you look and you go, okay, nobody's home. So to have one actually pull in and pull right next to us, we were like, oh, That's super cool. You know? And yep. of course, they, they were a different color, which we prefer. Stop buying Blue Thunder. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their model was a little different from us. I think yeah. the rear bedroom with the, the real nice bath and all that. And we went in our trailer one night walking around. Yeah, we had fun exploring each other's campers and, and talking. And they're just a really super smart couple and just fun and full of knowledge. And I'm so grateful that I met them. That's another couple that we definitely want to try to run into again on the road. Yeah, and they were in the process of setting up a, a heavy-duty truck, so a big, you know, I couldn't remember if it was a Volvo or a Freightliner, but they had one already purchased, and they were setting yeah. it up to pull their river stone. And, of course, it was going to be red. It was going to match their camper. Yep. That's all about us, what we do. <laughs> this is the super cool head of Swirl with that amazing stuff on it. There's Fawn. She's a good friend. We met her at the last place. That's their camper. And her husband is Bill behind the wheel. There's Bill. So everyone's on camera now. And there is the world's cutest golf cart. <laughs> Talk about me. Yeah. <laughs> My golf cart? Yeah. yeah. So now, Bon and Bill. Hey, Bon. Hey. Hey, Bill. We met them when we were staying in Wisconsin. Yeah. And they were our neighbors. And then we were lucky enough to have them be our neighbors again in the Illinois Park. And Bon and Bill are part-timers. Yep. They still have their home, but they also have their camper and they're out on the road. I think they want a full-time eventually. Yeah. But they're well, waiting for maybe. Their... She's got like an incredible hot tub that God's used. So I don't know. She might not get that up. Yeah, she, they, they <laughs> talked about their house and how gorgeous it was and how they had it set up. So we're not sure if they're going to full-time or not. But I think they travel three or four months out of the year. Yeah, Fawn is a beautiful soul inside and out. Um, I just love her. I connected with her right away in Wisconsin. She is someone who's so sweet and is always there for you. And anything you think that you need, she's there. And then Bill, is, I love Bill. He just cracks us up. Now, in the scene you saw, we talked about their little golf cart where we, he thought we were talking about him. And he's cute, I will agree. But the golf cart is the cutest little golf cart I've ever seen in the entire world. And yeah, they tow it behind their fifth wheel. Yeah, uh, attached it's, on it as you saw in the Yeah, it's got picture. a little it, on a little platform. Probably one of the tiniest golf carts I've ever seen. Yeah, and they are cute on it. They're super cute on it. But then when they put us on it on the back the one time, I we're felt, on wheelies. I felt really large. I felt, I felt like, one, I was going to break it. and um, At a community center, and they were having outdoor s'mores cooking yeah. and stuff. I was, full of, I was full of marshmallows. Yeah, which Barb partaked <laughs> in. And uh, 
they rode his back on the golf cart, and we felt like monsters on the yeah. back of it because we were like almost four yeah. wheelies going they up. They look the hills. so cute and perfect, like perfect little dolls in the front, and we're like, Ugh. we're like big monsters on the back <laughs> riding a wheelie. We had the best time with them. We hung out with them. We were outside with them. We had fire with them. It was just yep. great. And there's and their grandson is amazing. He's yep. just a wonderful young man. So in our journeys, we have met incredible people on the road. We've met a lot of people on the road. Yeah. But the incredible ones make it into my phone. And in my phone, I have a listing that either says Can-Am or it says RVer. And these three sets of people are in there. And we have stayed in touch very well with Vaughn and Bill. We've talked with Gary and Carol on and off over yep. the period of time. And then Mike and Lucy are a little more harder to get a hold of, but we do follow each other on social media yep. and occasionally talk back and forth. But the RV friendships you forge on the road are amazing friendships. Yep. I mean, even though you may not talk to these people all the time, I know that if I had a problem or I had a question or I had an emergency, I could call any of these people and say, hey, I need your help. I need your advice. And I know they would be there for us as we would be there for them. Yeah, it's sad sometimes because you kind of get immersed in their lives and you know you're only going to be immersed for a short time. It's so neat because you get to learn about their lifestyle and their kids and their grandkids and all that stuff that comes with it. Yeah. So The people that you meet are important because in today's world with so much negativity and so much horrible news and all this stuff going on, it's so nice to get out and actually meet real people human beings yep. to find out a lot of what they say out there is not always true. We find ourselves turning off the 24 hour news cycle more and more yeah. because it's all negative in your face and we know those aren't the type of people that we run into on the road. No, and we've met people from all kinds of cultures and all kinds of ways of life and it's been the most enjoyable experience about what we've been doing so far is the people that we've met. This park is one of the few parks that we've found that actually has real walking trails for people to walk on. Yep. That's the entrance there that I'm showing, but when you get back there, it splits off into different areas. And of course, Hedis World can get lost on any trail, big or small. It's pretty incredible. So if you're staying at this park, we definitely recommend that you walk on the walking trails. The trails that aren't marked real well. And like Barb said, Hedis World can get lost anywhere on trails. So a lot of times I rely on good old Google map. It knows where I left. So I can always find my way back, even though it's not the same path we took getting there. I'm still waiting for a subscriber to tell me how to trail better. Yeah. <laughs> Let's show you this because this is incredible. It actually has a handicap area that's all paved yep. for wheelchairs. Oh, yeah. So it's really cool. They built it probably to ADA compliant, I'm yep. sure. So some thousand trails tell you they can't do this kind of stuff, but this one can. They are working on putting washers and dryers up here. Man, it smells super clean, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and then let me show you the... All right, so one... It smells new. And then Bye, buddy. there's showers. I mean, look at that. And everything's clean because nobody uses it. But there's four of them in here. And it's air conditioned. It feels good. Yeah, it's even air conditioned. I mean, it's just incredible. Super incredible. There are 16 sites in here that... Pull through sites are huge. Yeah. And these back in sites. Yeah, at first they wanted to send us back there. Then they wanted to put us like over here. And we said, why can't we just be here? And they said, well, we're saving it for big rigs. I'm like, um, we're about as big as I you told get. you we have the big rig. So, so Bob, would you stay at this park again? I would definitely stay at this park again. I mean, um, it's nice to find thousand trails that you're actually willing to want to mark on your little your cheat sheet that I will stay at this park again because right now it's just well maintained just because they got spots designated for thousand trails members but just because they keep it so well maintained you have and to it, remember everything's for sale so we'll have to see what happens when we come back yeah it's just got all the amenities you either use them or you don't but it's it's got the amenities you want amenities are all well kept you know if you wanted to use the showers or, or use the pool mm -hmm. it, it's all well kept I mean that's all we ask for for in uh, yep. thousand trails yeah you can drive on the roads here and not get beat up i mean the worst thing you hear is you get dusted and that's not the park's fault it's just because it won't rain yeah i mean it's definitely a yes for me also up here in this area it's super quiet you know you've yep. got everybody coming in they might be working on their rig they might be doing whatever they might be traveling it's just quiet and it's nice i mean out there in the park it gets a little it's a little rowdy sometimes so but it is a yes and a thumbs up for me yeah gary and carol that's right behind us us river stoners 
Um, they, Hi, Gary like Jill. I said, they're going to the uh, frog rally. So Gary and Carol's been waxing their camper up. So we hope that you like this video. We are trying to give you more details on all the parks we're staying, especially the Thousand Trails. And so please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe because we want you to be on travels with us. Please. Give us the comments. We would like to know what your favorite Thousand Trails are. Yes, please. Please uh, click the notification bell because you yep. need to get notified. notified. And remember, we're Headless World. Come travel in our world. Bye.